Hey there, hikers and wannabe hikers. This is Jonathan from Hiking in SC. And right now you can't see my face. That is because this is my first time ever doing a screen recording to uh, show you guys something. So, I just want to take a second to say thank you for stopping by. And hopefully we will be able to show you how to research a trail using all trails. So this morning I was doing some research, filling in some places I want to visit using OneNote, my favorite note-taking app. And I came across one called the Blue Ridge Historical Railroad Trail. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you guys how to use all trails. Now, the first thing I did was come over to Google and type in Blue Ridge Historical Trail. It will bring up some information and here as you can see it says all trails at the top this is because all trails has a listing for this trail it says here blue ridge railroad historical trail is a 3.9 mile out and back so that leads me to looking on all trails you can go into the search box and type in the same thing Blue Ridge and it'll bring it up right here. So there are a few things that I want to point out. First, it tells you a little bit about the trail and right here it says 3.9 mile out and back. That means that you will travel out to the end and come back to the same point that you started from. It says here that it is 3.9 miles with a elevation gain of only 492 feet. Now that can be a little bit deceiving because let's just say that you had a trail that's 6,000 feet for example and here it may say elevation gain of 200 feet. That can be deceiving because let's say you're going to go up the trail and then come back down the trail. So the difference between the start point and the end point is only 200 feet, but you actually went up 6,000. So just keep that in mind. But this trail, I'll show you how to tell that it is not going to be that hard by using what are called the top topographical map. So also on the screen, you can see that it shows the weather. And for example, here it's showing 53 degrees as a high and sunny for tomorrow, which is Sunday. You can also read reviews on the page. So here you can read what other people have experienced as they were going down the trail. And some of these can really save you some time and or aggravation because you'll be able to see what people encountered before you even get there. As an example, this uh, gentleman here says, trail was a bit watery and muddy in some spots. About a half, a mile and a half in, you will get to the middle tunnel where there are some markers and trail guides. So you can also see if people have taken their children and if they had a good time or the kids maybe hated it. What we're going to do is we're going to click on where it says full, view full map. That is going to take us here. And as you can see at the bottom, you can see where it's going to be as far as height or elevation. And you see the little blue dot that's traveling at the same time that we're scrolling across. So that's going to show us here that between here and here, we're going to have a 8% grade and then at places 12%. So it shows you that in almost uh, in real time as you're going along this scale. Now, to navigate the map, you can scroll in or zoom in using the scroll wheel. And using the left mouse button, you can click and drag the map. Now. These lines right here are called topographical lines. So right here, where they're closer together, means that the elevation is gonna be more pronounced. 
So right here, it's going to be steep. Here, they're a little farther apart. This means that it's not going to be as steep. And if you notice, the lines go up. That's not a very steep incline. Not steep. And then it kind of stays on the same level. So it stays on the same level as far as these lines of elevation. So as you go along here, you can see that this stays relatively along the same level of the mountain relatively the whole way. That is how you navigate the map. But what you can also do is you can use this little button right here. It's called the Map Options button. Once that you go here, I usually like to go down to the bottom and you can turn on waypoints. And this is where people will mark on the map if there are camping spots or water available or things that they wanted to remember later in time. Here, you have the one called Photos. If we turn that on and hit Apply, you'll see there's a bunch of red dots now. And if we zoom in, we can zoom in closer and hover over any of the dots and it will show what the picture was and its location. So right here, it shows a sign. We can click on the picture and it will show us in that spot, there should be a sign that says uh, some information about the trail and about the railroad and that kind of information. So we can back out of there. And this helps us to know what we might see at certain spots on the trail. Here, it looks like a really cool tree. But this kind of information is great to know at the outset. So let's zoom out. And now, once we've picked our trail, we know that it's an out and back trail. We've read reviews. We've looked at the weather. And now, we need to say, hmm, let's get this onto our phone. So here, we have a button that says Add to List. If we click on that, it will let us save this trail to our personal list that we've established inside of our account. I have mine broken down in different ways. So you could have what's a to-do list or North Carolina hikes or South Carolina hikes, however you want to break those up. So I'm going to put this on my to-do list. I'm going to click there and I'm going to click done. Now once we've opened the trail from our phone, at the bottom of the screen it will have a directions button. If you click that button, it will open a notification that says open Apple Maps, open Google Maps, or copy to clipboard. I usually go with Google Maps. Once that you click that and enter into Google Maps, you can hit start and it will bring you right to the trailhead. At that point, you will want to go back to all trails and hit the navigate button. The navigate button will put a blue dot onto the map and it will show you just like you see right here you'll see yourself progressing down the trail so you'll know when you're getting close to where someone has taken one of these pictures you'll also know how far you have left and how you relate to anywhere in the trail you'll also be able to tell if you've gotten off the trail and that is an extremely handy thing to know. Now one thing that I highly, highly, highly recommend is to put your phone on airplane mode and also low power mode. Your GPS will still work even in this mode, but it will conserve your battery, which you will need to be able to use the GPS as you hike the whole trail. So this isn't a very long video but hopefully I've given you a little bit of an overview on how to use all trails, how to find a trail, how to search it, as well as how to see how difficult it's going to be. This one is listed as moderate. If you see right here below the title, that means that it's going to be a little bit of inclines as you see, 
there probably won't be any rock scrambling or anything like that. Um, but there will be some, you know, elevation gain as you go through the whole trail. Hopefully you've learned how to tell what the weather will be like. And also you can scroll down and see reviews for the trail. This will also help you to save the trail to your list on your phone and also find directions to the trailhead. So now let me show you one other tip. So let's just say you're not scrolling along looking for places to visit. Let's just say you want to take the kids out for a little hike and so you decide to go on all trails and you just want to find something reasonable for them to do. If you open up all trails, you can go to the filters and you can click on any one of these. So this one says difficulty. You can click on easy, moderate, or hard. From there, you can also narrow that down by the length of the hike, elevation gain, how long it's going to take, and the route type. I usually like to do out and back or loop. And so these will help you narrow down a search very quickly as far as for kids or dogs or just by yourself. Hopefully we've given you a pretty good overview of how to use all trails for finding new hiking spots. So if you're addicted to anything hiking like I am, I'm going to put two videos over here to your right and they will give you more hints, tips, and tricks to hike in this great state of ours, South Carolina.